Hello and welcome. My name is George and my channel is all about helping you get the most out of Logic Pro so that you can record and produce your best music in your home studio. Today, I'm going to share with you five must-know metronome tips in Logic Pro. So let's dive in. So the first tip is simply how to turn the metronome on and when the metronome is actually going to play. So to turn the metronome on, you simply hit this little icon up here, which looks like a metronome. And you'll see when that's lit up, the metronome is now on. And you can also activate it simply by hitting the letter K on your typing keyboard. So that will turn that on and off as well. But that doesn't determine when the metronome is actually gonna play. So if I click and hold on the icon here, you'll see here it says click while playing, or you can do click while recording. So right now, if I press play, you'll hear the click. Or what I can do is I can say click while recording and also uncheck while playing. So now if I press play, you'll no longer hear the metronome. However, if I were to record, let's say over here, now during recording, I hear the click, but I don't hear it just on regular playback. So that can be really helpful if you're in the recording mode and you wanna hear it while you're recording, but as you're just listening back or mixing, you don't wanna hear that. So you can choose to have it enabled or disabled depending on what you're doing. On a related note to recording, I'll just quickly show how you can turn on the count-in feature and change that. So if you go to record in your menu bar and you go to count-in, Here's where you can set your count in. So right now it's set at one bar. You can choose that none or two bars. So with that one bar count in, wherever I set my locator, so let's say a bar 97 right now, if I hit record, it's gonna give me one bar counted. So you'll see a jump to bar 96. And then it starts recording at bar 97. And you can also choose to have the metronome set during that count in only if you'd like. So in this case, you'll hear the four beats when I hit record and then it'll turn off the metronome after that. Now for tip number two, let's look at actually changing the subdivision of the metronome. So how often the metronome plays. So right now, if I turn on my metronome during playback once again and press play, you'll hear the metronome every beat. So every quarter note. And we're in four four time, so currently we're getting four clicks per bar. And the first click is a different pitch than the other three. So if we want to change how often those clicks are happening, we can do that in our settings. So to get to the settings, we'll click and hold again on this icon, and we can go to metronome settings. Now we can also get to the metronome settings by going to file, and then project settings, metronome. So now here you'll see we have bar, group, and beat activated. So if I just have bar, now we're just going to hear the downbeat, so beat one of every bar. And if I jump down to beat, then we'll get all four beats with that accented first beat. And if I turn off the bar, then we would just get the same sound for all four beats. I'll turn bar back on. Now, if we wanted more subdivisions, I can click division. And now you'll hear even more clicks happening. So now we're hearing 16th notes. If you wanna change the subdivision, we can go up here to where it says 16th and change that to eighth notes, for example, and now you'll hear a different subdivision. Now, if I enable group, you're not gonna hear a difference in this scenario. This applies to compound meters such as 6, 8, or 12, 8. Now, tip number three, I'm gonna show you how you can actually change the sound of the metronome. 
So to do that, we're gonna go into our mixer and I'll just hit the letter X on my keyboard to go there. And I'm gonna hit the all here, which is gonna show all the tracks in my current session. And we're gonna go and find our click track, which is right here, labeled click. And you'll see at the top that it's actually loaded in an instrument. So let's go ahead and open that. So the default click instrument is this Klopgeist. That's my best guess at how you pronounce that. And you can play around with all these different options, but there's also some presets here that are gonna change how the click sounds. So I'll just play that and go through some of these. And I can also just toggle through the presets using these arrow buttons. So those are some different sounds that you can experiment with if you don't particularly like the default sound that gets loaded in with the metronome. Now tip number four, I'm gonna show you how to change the instrument altogether. So let's say none of those sounds are very appealing to you. You can actually replace this instrument with whatever you want. So let's say we want, instead of just a regular click, we want an actual drum. So let's go up here, click on this arrow, and let's go to Drum Kit Designer, for example. So now we've got just our regular drum kit here. I'm gonna close this for now. And if I press play, you'll start hearing some drums playing. So right now we're just getting a drum hit on the downbeat. So if we want this to sound more like actual drums, then we need to go back to our metronome settings. So let's do that again. So I'll just click and hold here, go to metronome settings. And here you can see the MIDI notes that are being triggered. So these have to line up with the notes of your instrument. So I set this to a piano, for example, then you would hear the note G5, C sharp, C. So if I want the downbeats to be on a kick, for example, then I know the kick trigger on my drum is actually gonna be C. So let's go down to C here. So now that we have the kick on the downbeat of every bar. Now we can add the snare on the other hits, so that'll be D1. And if we wanted to add in the hi-hat, then we could add subdivisions and that'll be F sharp. So right now that'll be 16th notes or we could set this to eighth notes. And we can increase the volume just by bringing up the velocity. or if you just wanted the hi-hats, then you could take off the beat. So you can do that to change the sound to any software instrument you'd like for your metronome. So as I said, it could be a piano, it could be a drum, it could be whatever you'd like. Now the fifth and final metronome tip I'm gonna share with you is to actually automate your metronome. So let's say for the majority of the song you're recording, there's drums in the background and you don't need that metronome, but maybe there's a down section, such as a breakdown course, where the drums come out and you need a click behind that to actually still record to, so that you don't lose time with the rest of the song. So you can use automation to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and close these settings. And I'll just quickly demonstrate what I mean by playing this song. So there's this kind of verse breakdown here. So if I turn off my metronome and play this a couple bars before the break, you'll hear what I mean. We're going out tonight. I don't care if it's wrong or it's right. Oh, they were 
So there's this little break where there's no drums. So if we were overdubbing the acoustic guitar, for example, we would need a steady click so that when all the other instruments come back in, we all come back in together. So to do that, I can automate the click track. So I'll turn that click back on. And here under my click where it says read, I'll just simply press the little on button that you see here. If I click that twice, then that brings my click track into my arrange page. And now I can close the mixer again with the letter X. And to enter automation mode, I'll hit the letter A, or you can also hit this button up here. And now I'll simply click this little line here. And here is where I can draw in my automation. So I'll just click a few points to bring that up and then bring it back down. So I'll once again, press play here. You won't hear the metronome at all. And then the metronome will come in, which is now that drum sound that we loaded in. And then it'll fade out once the other drums come back in. And there you go. So that's how you'd go about if you just wanted the metronome in a specific spot in your song while you're recording. So I hope that helped you better understand some different ways where you can use the metronome and get some different sounds out of it if you don't like the basic metronome sound. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions about the metronome. And if you want to continue to improve your workflow in Logic Pro, don't forget to download my free Logic Pro hotkey cheat sheet by following the link in the description below. I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the next one.